Welcome back to the Net Zero Carbon Summit at Freight Waves. I'm Alan Adler, the Detroit Bureau Chief, and I'm joined today by Pablo Kozener, who is the president of Energy and Commercial at Nikola Corporation. Pablo, thanks very much for being with us today. Oh, that'd be great to be here. Thank you, Alan. This is a relatively new job for you because you, you certainly spent a lot of time in the construction space with Caterpillar. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your background. So I spent almost 19 years at Caterpillar through various uh, different jobs. I started as an attorney and then moved into various business lines in the, in the dealer organization. In 2013, I became a vice president of Caterpillar, first responsible for the dealer network in the Americas. Then I was offered the opportunity to be president of a company called Solar Turbines in San Diego, which is a fantastic organization. And then my last job was as vice president of Global Electric Power. And so from a segue standpoint, electric power is exactly, you know, uh, what you're involved with now here at Nikola since really only about eight months, I guess. That's correct. But, uh, but running sort of the energy space, because when we think about Nikola, really from the beginning, it's always been about zero emissions. That's been sort of the, the great vision, really. It's gotten lost at times, but that's always been the vision here. And uh, at least publicly, that's gotten lost. But, but sometimes it does get lost. And I guess I... I guess I'd ask you from where, you know, the area that you cover, uh, how do you keep the team focused? Well, so on the, on, the, on the topic of zero emissions at the vehicle level, that's the passion around here. People join this company because they're motivated by changing heavy transport and ultimately decarbonizing an area of, of the uh, transportation segment that is today a major contributor uh, to carbon emissions. And um, now in terms of focus, the focus here is absolutely on execution. So you've got the passion on zero emissions at the vehicle, uh, decarbonizing the entire hydrogen value uh, chain, and, and then absolutely focused on getting our objectives completed and, and uh, providing a lot of value for customers and, and the world. Well, we're seeing, we're seeing something kind of interesting happen. I, you know, I personally spent some time in that hydrogen space uh, in, a, in an earlier career. Um, and it's always been hydrogen specifically rather than electricity right now. It's always been sort of 10 years away, right? right yeah. Well, now we're seeing money literally piling in. You know, there was an ETF started recently for hydrogen, and, and you're seeing a lot of companies that have seen a lot of uh, appreciation, um, you know, those that have been around for a while and toiling and that kind of thing. How does that really make a difference for you? Nikola was ahead of the curve, really, uh, on hydrogen and a hydrogen society. I mean, you don't really use that word much, but there's words. But really, there's a long way to go. Do you see, do you and the company feel affirmed or maybe even a little bit vindicated in pursuing this? Well, I, what, we, what we feel is we think we're at the right place at the right time with the right strategy. And the context within which we're working is very favorable and very important, right? So you have, you have um, governments that are, that are very uh, committed and, and, and driving investment in decarbonization. There are climate goals that are, that are going from nice to have to real mandates. And then you have private industry that looks at sustainability as a major corporate objective. And when you combine these things, plus advancement in technology, uh, the focus that we're seeing, it absolutely, we, we just feel very well positioned to uh, execute our strategy. We're, we're, the context of this is very important. And that's why I think hydrogen, which has always been something that is to come in terms of making a reliable, safe and, and cost effective, uh, now with the focus that we're seeing in the investment, it's it's getting closer and closer every day. It's so funny because you know hydrogen is all around us, right? Absolutely. But harnessing it a little tougher, a little it's tougher. A, yeah. It's a how much? Market. So how much attention are you paying now to hydrogen that that Nikola uses as green hydrogen? We have lots of colors. We almost have a rainbow there in terms of uh, types of of hydrogen. Uh, you know, to truly be zero emission and to you know use renewables and things like that. Talk about that a little bit, if you would. So we're highly focused when we look at the hydrogen value chain. That's everything from production all the way to uh, when it's used in the, in the vehicle. We look at this from the eyes of a carbon intensity. And what we are absolutely committed to, which is a mission of this company, is for that carbon intensity to be zero or even negative, uh, if you will. And ultimately what that means is that in, sometime in the future, you want to be generating hydrogen from renewable uh, sources. Now, that is, is a journey. And so everything that we look at starts with safety, reliability, lowering the carbon intensity, 
and then ultimately making it cost effective so that it drives a lot of value for our customers. But we aspire to a future where uh, the, the energy used to create hydrogen is from fully renewable sources. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we do have a, a fair amount of steam methane reforming going on today. Right. Do you, blue hydrogen, if you will. Do you see, do you see that as, a, as a, a stop gap or a gap filler in places where you can't go and maybe cut an electricity deal like you did here in Arizona? That's right. Uh, you know, so, so is there a place for that along the way as you, you know, I guess they used to say, don't let uh, good be the enemy of best. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a place for different forms of, of creating hydrogen, whether it's from SMR, steam methane reforming or carbon capture. What we look at is every time that we uh, analyze production, we look at that carbon intensity and make a decision about is that the best um, opportunity for us to do it? Always measuring safety, reliability um, and, and cost, which are important to make this go forward. And then we, we look at that, and in some cases, we absolutely do take advantage of some of these um, ways of generating hydrogen. But ultimately, it's all part of an effort and a journey to continuously reduce carbon intensity. So we're highly focused on renewable. So where we can take renewable and do this well, that is our preference. Nikola is built more or less on a partnership model, right? I mean, you, right. you don't try to invent everything yourself. There's a company that, that, that we talk about a fair amount of Freightways Cummins, which has two businesses. It's known as an engine maker, but they also have a new power unit that is really heavily into fuel cells. Sure. It's not the only one I could mention, but it seems like with all the electrolyzer capacity that they have and are bringing online and things like that, uh, can I suggest a partnership? No, I'm just thinking, I mean, is that the kind of thing that you work on? Not necessarily. So we, we look at partnerships um, as a way of accomplishing these very challenging uh, goals that we have. And so we are a company of partnerships. And I think that's very important, right? Because if you look at the solutions we put to market, you've got great partners with great engineering resources, a lot of investment already that's taken place that stand behind these products. Mm -hmm. And we, we uh, think very carefully about the types of partners that we can associate with so that we ultimately deliver best in class products and, and services for, for customers. And, and partners at Nikola span from everywhere from truck components to energy partners to partnerships in supply chain, whatever it may be, because we believe that by picking and choosing the right uh, organizations to do this with gives us a significant competitive advantage and advances our ability to do things versus having to design everything ourselves in-house. Right. Well, with the cost of hydrogen and, and, and getting it to you know, a transportation mode, uh, you've seen it and I'm sure you track it as well as I do, but uh, you know, two unlikely rivals in Daimler and Vol uh, Volvo creating a fuel cell uh, joint venture with, uh, as was pointed out to me recently, uh, you know, they, have, uh, uh, they have a stationary component planned and things like that. You've got some of the Asian automakers that, that are coming here, uh, maybe even this year with, uh, with trucks, fuel cell trucks. Uh, a lot going on out there. Again, after a long time of just sort of the promise, now you're starting to see these, these early things. Is that in, in some ways uh, encouraging because you've got others in the field or is it also a little threatening? I would say it's fantastic. I mean, when you have good companies partnering um, in a mission that we collectively share, which is to decarbonize transport, and they're investing, making progress, this is great for the industry. And if you look at us from an energy standpoint, we want to serve all makes, right? Mm -hmm. So as we uh, build stations and, and, and we deliver low-cost hydrogen to these stations, uh, the, the best way to propel the, the hydrogen economy forward is to make sure that we're serving not only our own uh, truck internal customer, uh, but to do something that offers strong industry uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then on the truck side, we aspire to be, you know, the, the, the preference of choice to the market. And when you compete with, with good companies, they just make you better. Uh, if you look at the amount of trucks over a 20 year period, I think it's around 190,000 tractors are sold. There's ample opportunity and there will be ample demand if, if we all get this right uh, to bring this technology to bear. And it, it will not only be one company that does this. So um, we, we are fans of companies that are helping propel hydrogen transportation forward. That's good for all of us. Mm -hmm.
So Pablo, Nicola from the very beginning um, has been involved in sort of the standard setting process for hydrogen. How informative or helpful is that in terms of kind of keeping up with what's going on? I mean, you get to be a fly on the wall in other people's discussions, as well as uh, hopefully do get to some kind of uh, collaborative stance. Talk about that if you would. Oh, that's right. I mean, I think it's paramount for a company like Nikola, and, and we feel very privileged and honored to be able to collaborate with industry partners to set standards so that this industry can really evolve in a way that the investment dollars are applied in a way that drives consistency in fueling standards and protocols, which ultimately we think propels um, investment and industry and learning. So we, we, we have a, a many people that are involved on many committees, uh, a gentleman named Antonio Ruiz, who's, who's highly involved in, in setting fueling protocols and industry standards that uh, we're very excited about and we're going to build into our own products and, and services. It, it took a while, at least from an SAE perspective, for uh, J1772, I still remember the, the number, to come along in terms of charging standards, things like that. Um, do you think you can avoid some of that sort of detouring here and there kind of work on hydrogen? Well, I, that's precisely, you know, the lessons learned that we're, we're trying to apply into hydrogen fueling is that if, if we can get it right from the very beginning, if we can, if the industry can adopt or at least major industry players can adopt these uh, standard, these standards and, and protocols. Then we think we'll move much faster, and it'll be it'll, at the end. It's a better thing for customers, and it's a better thing for for all OEMs. Yeah, I'm also curious too. You've got uh, uh, back to electri electrification, if you will. You've got some very large batteries uh, that, that drive these trucks because you need them. They also have tremendous secondary life value. Do you work on that? Do you have a team working on what to do with these things when they're sort of out of out of useful life in in trucks. Oh, we do, and we're thinking we're thinking long and hard in terms of how we can repurpose certain components. Batteries being a prime example of that. And so, stay tuned uh, because the, these uh, these components uh, could find their way into secondary uses that um, ultimately we think could, can drive value and and avoid uh, having these things having to go and 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 be disposed and creating waste. Is there, is there a value then? I mean, certainly, you know, we hear about uh, hydrogen being uh, stationary uses. Sometimes it's done with a little different technology sure. than electrolysis, but uh, at least in, in, the, uh, in the battery side, uh, is this something where you'd see it perhaps, and I'm going to make it up as I go along, but do, do you see it perhaps tying into wind or other renewable storage and, and things like that? I mean, you know, refeeding to the grid. That's, that kind well, of certainly. I mean, there's some technical things that have to be worked through, uh, of course, but batteries are, are energy storage mediums. And so you can take them presumably off of a vehicle and, and given the size and the amount of batteries that are going to be generated to, to make this all happen. And then thinking about repurposing that so you can put them in a stationary application and, and taking advantage of the remaining useful life, which should be you know, relatively significant. Yeah. That's, that's a great uh, you know, challenge to solve for. So great. we are absolutely thinking about that. Mark Russell told me recently that, that Nikola, you know, if necessary, is prepared to go it alone without, without partners or hydrogen stations. Um, is that something that you feel is a, is a function of partners, perhaps potential partners distancing themselves? Or is it a, a question of now that you have this electricity deal in Arizona and potentially, you know, for wind or for hydro else, elsewhere, that you can just sort of set up these kinds of things? Is there a little of both in that? So Mark, I think, was expressing a lot of confidence in his team, which I, I appreciate. And what, what he was saying is that we have the capability, if necessary, to go it alone. But that's not our preference. We, we are a company, as we were talking about before, of partnerships. And what I think you can expect to see going forward is multiple partnerships across a lot of different types of solutions to bring uh, hydrogen fueling uh, in the way that we're we're envisioning this forward. So it's not a, by any means, a choice to go it alone. It's a capability statement. But in order to bring this to fruition, we are going to depend on strong partnerships. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we're working on. Yeah. You know, we, we, we talk about uh, Nikola having sort of, uh, you know, three businesses, electric trucks or battery electric trucks, fuel cell trucks, and, and a hydrogen business. Um, how do you, and at what point do you, get to be making money in the production of hydrogen? Because that seems to be something that doesn't get asked very often. Oh, so we're obsessed at this company about lowering the cost of 
of production of hydrogen. And ultimately how you make money is by, one is pleasing your customers, right? So it all has to work, it has to be safe, reliable, and ultimately you have to be providing strong value. The, the work that we're doing, the engineering, the technical work is, is very focused on driving down the cost of the production of the hydrogen molecule. So as we continuously work towards doing that with the help of great partners, that's how ultimately this becomes a very viable business and provides the value across the board to all of our key stakeholders. You've got in, in China and to some extent in Europe, uh, a bit of a head start around fuel cells and around hydrogen and, and that sort of thing. Now there is a possibility, and I don't expect you to um, comment on it directly, but if you did end up in a situation where say your manufacturing partner Aveco ended up under different ownership, in, in this case, Chinese ownership, and you know, there's a lot of value it would seem in terms of what Nikola could bring to a global environment, a Chinese environment where there is obviously a greater demand, more people, and you know, uh, you have some familiarity with China from your from your past. Sure. You know. Well, I, I, what I'll say is that our focus now is North America and Europe. That there's plenty of work to do in those markets, and as far as other markets, and there are other markets that represent strong opportunity, and, and more to come there. As we are presented with those opportunities, we'll look at them. And, and certainly we aspire uh, to have global leadership as, as those opportunities arise. Uh, but I can't say enough about the focus that we have today under Mark Russell's leadership and the executive team. We are, are, are really trying to solve for the North American market and, and Europe. And um, that's where you can expect us to, to be working hard. Fair enough. I, I also am, am curious, though, about uh, um, about how you're able to sort of balance the two. You've got, you know, battery comes first, battery electric comes first, and, and obviously you've got some some work that you're near term work to do there. But I understand, too, that fuel cells are not very far behind it in, in terms of what you're going to be doing. How are you on a daily basis working through some of those things? So, first of all, the, the collaboration in the company is fantastic. The platforms of these vehicles, in some cases, have shared uh, components, and so that helps us by releasing the battery electric vehicle first. We have two separate teams that work on these platforms, so there's a battery electric vehicle uh, leadership and, and program, and there's a fuel cell vehicle program and leadership. And it's, it's really just about being very clear on the focus and the timing and, and meeting those objectives. We're very proud to be able to at some point offer both of those technologies because we at Nikola believe that they both will have a role going forward. You'll see, you'll see improvements in battery technology. You're going to see improvements in hydrogen fuel cells and, and the production of hydrogen. And we expect that these things are going to shake out so that there is a use case, a mission, and a segment for both of these platforms. And by by focusing on these things early on, we hope that we'll, we'll be in a position to, to lead and, and continue to add value as we, as we do future generations of these products. Very good. Pablo, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being you part of the, the Net Zero Carbon Summit. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to talk you, to you. You bet.